We are live. Maybe now. if OBS will do it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Beastly Thoughts, man. It's going to be an exciting show, guy. I, I couldn't hold back. This is the show that we've all been waiting for. Everybody get naked. <laughs> Sit at your computer. Don't worry about who's watching. This is the E3 Beastly Thoughts episode. I'm the E3, the pre-show. E3 pre-show. We're going to talk about what we're excited about. We're gonna we got a we got a couple of giveaways to actually announce today. We are giving away a uh, blue yeti today. Uh, we Woo! got I got a uh, hat filled with names. We're gonna draw do a live drawing right on stream. Uh, and Beastly's Beastly Gamer, I'll be giving away Minecraft to a random subscriber from my uh, three thousand subscriber video. That's awesome, man. That. I'm glad you hit 3,000 subscribers, and uh, fucking congratulations, man. That's amazing. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, man. That's a it's big been number. A, That's a big number. It, it, it right? really is. I, I remember when I hit 50, I thought I was the man. I was uh -huh. moonwalking around the house. And uh, 3,000, yeah. that's, that's a hell of a feat. I don't, believe that. I don't believe that you were moonwalking. I want video proof. All right. I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you know I'll do it. Um yeah, man, uh, it's, been, it's been an exciting time, and I couldn't have done it without all you guys, Briar, Robbie, all the subscribers, the viewers, thank you all so much. I'm looking forward to 5, 10, 100, and a million one day. I'm never going to stop doing this. I have a contract uh, with the devil, so I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't stop doing this. You might this. want to stop them. You might want to get out of it some way or another. You're absolutely right, Robbie. I quit. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out, bitch. E3, guys, are you guys excited? We're so so. Dude, I'm really to... excited. E3 kicks I'm... off the summer for me. It's you know, it's like that thing that happens that really kicks off the summer, gets you excited for the fall. You know, all the big game releases that are coming in the fall this year. I think E3 is you know double exciting because we're gonna we're gonna hear about a new PlayStation. We're gonna hear you know about a little bit of new Xbox stuff. Uh, stuff. Nintendo has got some stuff on the horizon. I don't think they're going to talk about the new console, uh, but they are going to be talking about the new Zelda game. There's a lot of stuff that's pretty exciting. Uh, it's also a transitionary time for E3. A lot of companies have decided, well, trying to, to do these big there. news blasts all at once, we're sharing too much of the media. So a lot of them are pulling out of E3. You're seeing like big companies like Activision say, we're not going to do E3 boosts anymore. Instead, we're going to we're just going to talk directly to our to our consumers, to consumers. our users, you know, one on one or through live streams or through uh, YouTube or through like th that kind of thing. And I think that's actually really exciting. I think it's 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 a more intimate way of kind of uh, talking to us, which I, I think kind, is pretty kind cool. of like the Nintendo Direct. How Nintendo yeah, kind I think of Nintendo kind of kicked this off, right? Is they kind mm -hmm. of are leading this. A lot of people thought it was a dumb move on Nintendo's part, but uh, now it looks like you know other companies are kind of following that lead. That's yeah, it, it's it's really funny to me, you know, that Nintendo did that, and like you said, there was a lot of hate because Nintendo Direct, for most consumers, especially in the seventh and eighth generation, Nintendo just wasn't very popular. But we see other companies like Activision going and doing these more intimate one-on-one -on -one type of uh, news news-centered events. But we also see other companies and developers actually joining E3. So it's a revolving door. You got people coming into E3, people leaving E3, and it's making it really more interesting and exciting for gamers, especially now when we see all these developers who are well known uh, and, and make am amazing games joining E3. It's always really exciting because we don't really know what they have on the docket, but knowing that they're going to be there, you know you can look forward to some new and exciting IP. With these big publishers leaving E3 too, it should open up room for smaller developers. Uh, to get a little bit more of that E three spotlight, so you know, hopefully we'll get we'll get a lot of news about smaller games like uh, you know No Man's Sky type of games or Super Meat Boy or like these you know smaller developers get a little more get a little a little more press, a little more hype, so they can show off mm -hmm. what they're doing. Yeah, and maybe so, turn their small game into a big game. Well, that's that. Hopefully, yeah. that's the plan, right? So, what we're going to do. Um, is kind of do what we normally do and, and do an early, really fast kind of snippet of what we've been playing. Uh, and I'll go first because this is kind of out of nowhere. I've been playing a lot of games, doing a lot of reviews. Uh, but this whole week I've been playing Alien Isolation on PlayStation oh, really? 4. That's a good yeah. game. <laughs> yes, really it is. Game. Yes. I really, really like it. Um, I'm very, very close to the end, or at least I think I am. I probably put 12, 15 hours somewhere in on that game so far. 
and it's one of those types of games that I really don't frequent. I don't really play this type of game very often. So a lot of the um, a lot of the mechanics kind of caught me off guard coming from traditional first person or third person gaming. It's really you know hide and seek. You gotta hide. You gotta find ways to distract enemies. You know you gotta basically be a bitch the entire game. And <laughs> God, it's scary. It really is. It's scary. It's very very fun. And uh, you guys look forward to that review. I know the game came out God a couple years ago. But I and I have it on PS3, but I never had a chance to play it. I've never even seen the opening cin- cinematic, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, finishing that up and, and playing that. I've also been playing uh, Odin Spear. If you guys have ever played the PlayStation 2 cult classic Odin Heard Spear, of it. never played it though. Do yourself a favor. Uh, this game is actually being re-released on PlayStation 4 with new modes, new characters, new animations. One of the things that uh, really marred down the PlayStation 2 Odin Spear experience was the frame rate because uh, they tried, Atlas tried so hard to put so much into the game as far as particle effects, enemies, animation, entirely hand-drawn uh, characters, and the world. So it was one of those kind of pioneering uh, uh, side-scrolling adventures, and they've redone it for PlayStation 4 with 60 frames per second, uh, new mechanics, new moves, new... It's just... It's kind of like Mortal Kombat meets a traditional side-scrolling adventure meets an RPG because you can do 300-hit combos in the air. There's five different playable characters, and you can even play the original traditional PlayStation 2 mode, and this game is actually going to be released, full released, on the 7th, and I'm buying it the day it releases... I've been playing it. Wow. Just going through the demo with all five characters. It's really, really amazing. Odin Spear, Briar Robbie, if you guys have not played it, please try the demo. It will sell you on the game, I promise you. And that's for everybody watching, too. And that's what I've been doing. What have you guys been up to? Robbie? I have been pretty much just playing Overwatch this week and even more. Like, I love the game. It's a ton of fun. And at first, like, I didn't even play it that much, but the more I'm playing it, the more I'm getting invested into it. And I think it's just because the fact that they have all these different classes, all these different characters that play completely differently, it just keeps the experience fresh. And I love the game. Like, I think Blizzard's made a wonderful game, and it's very fun. And it's just, yeah, it's just a good time. I know I'm going to go into that game and always have a smile on my face, and I love it. It's very good. That game has turned out to be, for me, a very short burst kind of game. I'll jump in there. I'll play a few matches, uh, but it, it's not—it's not holding my attention for like three to four hours, gotcha. which I was kind of surprised about. I'm still enjoying the game. Don't get me wrong, and I still feel the drive to play it, but it's not—it's not. I—I I don't know how to explain it. It's just not—it's not something I could just sit there and like grind on for three to four hours, you know. And I, uh, I was a little surprised about not, that because I am that kind it, of gamer. I will sit there and play PvP in games. You know, for hours on end. I've been that way since, I don't know, Modern Warfare 2, Halo days. I used to just sit there for four hours and play, you know, Halo 2 multiplayer online. Overwatch, I love Overwatch. I love all the characters. I love the systems. Uh, but I, I find that I just get, maybe it's because it's so multiplayer. It's so team focused. If I'm not in there with a team, I do get frustrated pretty quickly. Mm. Like, if I'm not in there with yeah. a team communicating, I do get. Uh, frustrated fairly quickly and maybe that's my problem is I really just gotta I've gotta make sure that I'm playing with a team not just going in there solo I don't Mm -hmm. think it's that you've been spoiled by destiny it's just you know how much better a team based experience is that may be it and in all fairness when I play destiny I'm almost always streaming it uh, and I always have a full party right if I Mm -hmm. go into Iron Banner or if even into Crucible and I want a party, I can just fill one up immediately, and we're all talking, we're all communicating. We're in Overwatch. Yeah. I'm not streaming Overwatch. I'm playing it on my own time. So that could be part of the thing for me, too. Got you, got you. Is there... I know the gameplay is rewarding because I played the demo. That's actually... There's two games I'm buying next. It's Overwatch and Odin Spear. Those are the two my wife and I have already mm-hmm. agreed on. Uh, we're just trying to get through some of our old backlog. You know, that, that <laughs> Got terrible your expense situation. report through the boss there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but is it that um, possibly Overwatch's gameplay isn't rewarding enough? I mean, are, No, are it's fun, man. Sl- it's is it's a really fun game. All the characters play differently. They did, frankly, an excellent job with the character designs and how each character feels unique and different uh, and has their own strategy. So... Even though you're playing the same levels over and over again, and you're playing the same modes over and over again, um, 
because you're constantly switching characters, or at least because I'm constantly switching characters, I'm constantly feeling like I'm learning something new. And uh, that's what keeps my brain engaged when I play these things, is I feel like I want to constantly be improving, constantly learning. Once I feel like I've mastered something, it mm -hmm. almost holds zero interest for me. You know, it's just, gotcha. that, that's done. Um, okay. So I, li I like that about it. I, I, but I do feel frustrated when I'm not playing with a team. Uh, I've just noticed, because uh, you can get wiped out so easily by a, a well-coordinated team. Oh, yeah. I've noticed other Destiny-centered channels like yours, Briar, that have actually gone and started playing Overwatch, oh, yeah. too. So, you know, the, the like great minds think alike, man. You know, uh, it seems like everybody in the YouTube community who's big, uh, you know, on Destiny and well-known channels, they've all kind of migrated, and they're integrating Overwatch with Destiny on their channel as well. Yeah. So it, I guess it takes a special kind of game. You guys know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wouldn't be able to just pick like that, but I'm looking forward to getting to Overwatch. I'm looking forward to playing it. From everything I've heard, there are over 7 million uh, registered users playing the game now, you know, yeah. since yeah. it's launch. I also so, highly recommend buying that game for PC if it's an option for you. Well, highly you know, I can do it, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just not good with mouse and keyboard, Briar. Yeah. It's like it's a I license to get fucked. Maybe it's time to learn, though. You know, maybe this is like the good, op not good opportunity to kind of like explore that. I feel like the the rock man from Never Ending Story. Get <laughs> the gloves so on, take the pants off. You know, get you in know? There. Well, it, it may be an deep, option. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go balls deep. Come on, guys. Good shit, Robbie. Good shit. <laughs> Damn it, damn it, damn it. So it, it is an option. You know my PC can uh, easily run it. I may do it, you know. I know it's a lot cheaper on Steam than it is um, uh, for a console, correct? Well, there is a $40 version available uh, if you buy it for PC. Um, yep. But if you buy the $60 version, you get all the DLC forever for free. Yep. Holy shit. Okay, so. well, I may do that. I might go out there and get my ass kicked for the first couple of months and then finally get my first kill. It's yeah. such a good game. Yeah, yeah I'd absolutely good. recommend it very to everyone. Good. Like it's it it's a ton of fun. It's a game that I think anyone can get into. Like even yeah. if you're not a fan of shooters, I think this is something different. Like it's I, I think great. it's it has got like a casual element to it because like you can jump in there as Soldier seventy six and he feels like, you know, a standard space marine yeah. from a shooter. But then like you can expand and try try out like a healer class or a you know a tank class and just kind of just keep learning and it's a it's a lot of fun to learn. Yeah, well, I can't wait to get it. Now, look, guys, the, today's show is a little bit different. We're structuring it a little bit different because we normally go for about an hour. Today's show might be an hour, might be a little bit longer. It all depends on how it's run. But we do have a little bit of news. Depends on when I run out of beer. Okay, <laughs> shit. That's the one in the podcast. So we're done. We're I'm out of beer. <laughs> We got a little bit of news that happened throughout the week. We're going to run through that and don't, you know, we're not going to hover over it too long because we do want to get to our E3 stuff. So starting off, Sony has announced its E3 2016 experience, allowing PlayStation fans to watch its E3 press conference from select theaters on June 13th. That's really exciting. Uh, the guys told me that pre-show, uh, and that's something I would be interested in. But of course, I'm a little too late. What do you guys think oh, yeah. about that? Watching uh, that's Sony's cool, man. Like. It you know, obviously not everybody can go to that E3 press conference, but if you want to be surrounded by other people who are people who are super big fans like you are, and you want that community experience of getting yeah. hyped and cheering when you see something like really exciting, it sounds like an awesome idea. I'll be watching from okay. home, on uh, <laughs> but like, yeah. To be honest with you, like I would go check it out. I would go do it if I Just wasn't planning see. on like covering it, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. recording it, and you know. Hope, hoping that like a game I love has a little, a little uh, debut there. Mm, okay. Well, continuing on, this is more confirmed information about E3. Ubisoft has confirmed that Watch Dogs 2 is real and yeah. will make its debut at E3 2016 press conference on June 13th. So this Watch is Dogs weird. 2? They started sending out like bags to YouTubers and Twitch streamers. They mm -hmm. sure did. They, they basically let the YouTubers break the news. Like they, they open a box up. It's got an, it's got a Watch Dogs 2 bag, and they're like, well, I guess Watch Dogs 2 is confirmed. <laughs> yeah, like and then they came out, and them? Ubisoft came out and said, yep, it's coming. <laughs> it's, <laughs> really a little, it's a little yeah. backwards there. Yeah? I, I don't know. Is it, though? Is it? Like, it almost sounds brilliant to me. Is like, you can let all the YouTubers and Twitch streamers kind of spread that word for you. You know, you send them a bag, and, like, they'll do your marketing for you. It almost sounds brilliant to me. 
Go, if, yeah. if, all I gotta do if they want to be smart, just send one bag to PewDiePie, and that's it. That's all the marketing you're gonna need. You know? I think he's PewDiePie gonna, wants a little. Yeah, he's gonna get the cheddar. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna cost <laughs> just as much as it costs to develop deal. the he's game. He's gonna go balls deep on Ubisoft, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what porn were you watching today, Robbie? Continuing on, developer Starbreeze has announced it has acquired the rights to the Payday franchise and confirms there will be a Payday Three. Cops and robbers, honey. You know it's. Battlefield Hardline Part 2. There is no current market for virtual reality devices like the Oculus Rift. According to Take-Two CEO Strauss, I can't say his last name, Zelnick? Strauss Zelnick, yeah. Okay. The technology is far too expensive and unproven for mainstream success at this point in time. What do you guys think? I think I, I agree with him on this, and I understand where people are going to be like, well, I think there is a market for virtual reality, but at the same time, He's right. Like it's expensive hardware. It's unproven. It's especially for the Vive. You have to free up like an entire room for that thing. I mean, it's just, it's a really niche product right now. It's like and a yeah. two thousand dollar investment if you really rare. think about it. Because it's more yeah. than that. You need you need a a PC that can do it, and that's a pretty good fucking PC. And then yeah. you got to buy the hardware. You got to buy the Vive or the Oculus, which is the very Vive expensive. is eight hundred yeah. bucks, isn't it? Eight hundred. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's shit. Expensive. That's more than two thousand, man. Yeah, that's, that's, it really is. If you think cool. about it, you're probably looking more like a 2500 if you want. At least, yeah, you know, you're gonna you're gonna want at least a 980 to run that thing. Oh yeah, and that's that's an expensive card, and the new cards are coming out, which will probably run it even better. But yeah, it's expensive. Uh, I think it's an early adopter thing right now. We haven't seen that killer app either that really says this Carnival game is app. only playable in in VR. Like the only way to do this is in VR. You're missing out. Like. Until they have that and they have prices that people can actually afford, I think that'll come with the PlayStation VR. Um, then we'll start to see the stuff get adopted. But I do think that it's inevitable. Like, this yeah, is well, a thing, right? This is such yeah. a revolution. Absolutely. Such a revolutionary technology. And it's so compelling to actually be submersed into your game like that. It's just a matter of time. Prices will come it's down just like they else. do for everything. Yeah. The the developers developers will learn how to use this correctly and then we'll start seeing we'll start seeing wide adoption and yeah, i think that play, playstation vr is the first step to this that is the one i think the playstation vr we kind of see what's going on with the oculus rift and a lot of people are upset about it HTC vive extremely expensive we've got some lower tier uh, hardware out there as well i think the playstation vr is the entry point for many of us uh, over 40 million people have the playstation 4 at least one percent, maybe less, is going to want this thing and try to buy it. Right. And I think that's that's going to be the entry point for for most mainstream gamers because they got friends. People are going to come over and try it on. And when PlayStation does inevitably show off that killer app, which is called Drink Party, where you drink it every time you tilt your head back, your eyes get more discombobulated and you see stars and you get more and more drunk. And you're drunk in real life and you're drunk in the game. That is the game that's going to sell PlayStation VR. And the carnival app. All yes. right then. Brian's like, you're so full of shit. I, I yeah, I can. I don't do know that. what to say. <laughs> like, I can do that, that real life already. Life. Well, I'm more looking forward to uh, driving games that really take advantage of VR. Like I see, like the next Gran Turismo yeah, being I amazing know. in VR. Because uh, my biggest problem with driving games has always been the fact that you're looking straight ahead no matter where you're going. So if you're turning, like you guys have all seen that is that the easiest way to do a driving game is to drift around corners so that you can see where the corner ends yeah. but with vr you can be driving through a corner but be looking at your destination and then yeah. bring the car to where you're pointing oh, right? like, be, like you actually so drive cool. yeah. um, another yeah. thing is like space combat sims this is a no-brainer you're sitting in the cockpit but you can you can look space. around you you know like uh, i think elite uh, will be a big big VR seller. Um, like games like that, like games that it's so easy to build this in, right? You're already sitting in a cockpit, right? You might as well be able to look around. It would make the uh, the thing so much more immersive. And then first person shooters, oh, when they start coming, when they figure that out, how to make that not like motion six kind of thing, how fun is that going to be? Doing first person shooters yeah. in VR is going to be amazing. Yeah, I, I think that we're all right. I think that most people who are in the know and play games daily like we do know that virtual reality is the future. It, it's just inevitable. It is 
a very engaging and and very exciting uh, venture. And I think that most gamers are really excited about it. Some people don't want change. Some people didn't want the fucking DVD, you know. And now we got Blu-ray. I think that um, it's true. I mean, there was people back in the day pissed off that eight tracks. They stopped making eight track. You know. No, nobody was Some pissed people, off. They stopped making eight. Yeah, track. You're, you're probably right. Yeah, I'm too <laughs> old for this shit. But I, I think this is definitely the future, and uh, I yeah. can't wait to see what happens. I think that once uh, October comes around. And probably the first quarter of next year, we're going to see this thing kind of take off, and we're going to see the sparks. Of, Virtual uh, the reality is at least a part of the future. Like even if it doesn't take over conventional gaming, I think it's at least a part of it. Yeah, like it's part of the way you play games. You know, in those headsets, like they're going to be useful for other things. Like you want to watch a movie, you know, like the PlayStation VR headset is going to be able to do that. You know, like if you have mm. a. You know, you, you want to watch a movie, but, you know, maybe your wife's reading on the couch next to you. Hey, that's a really nice, nice way to do it. Oh. Hell, hell yeah. Oh. Wow. Brian, they need to talk to couch, you. You got some know? fucking really good ideas there, man. Yeah, you know what my idea is, though? But that, this idea you've heard before. What I want them to do is create a first-person shooter in VR that's hooked into Google Maps. Yeah. So that the work. level could be anywhere in the world. Right, your fucking front yard. Damn, yeah, your front cool. yard. You can you can literally play like Call of Duty in your front yard, right? Or at the mall, or that's an you incredible know, idea. Or wow. like in New York City in Times Square, like anywhere. There's Google Maps. That's your level. How sweet would that be? I want them to do yeah, that so bad. That, that that would be insane. Because they already sure have that... like all the information, mm -hmm. so they just gotta like you know they just gotta figure out a way to do that in the game. God, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be insane. That's like 10 years away, though. That's a long ways away. Well, I think it could probably really be long. sooner than that, but it's a great idea. And continuing yeah. on with the news, guys, EA initially rejected DICE's pitch for Battlefield 1, saying that younger audiences might not be aware, aware that World War I existed and that there was no market for games set during the World War era. <laughs> That says something about the public's uh, education system, guys. The younger audience. Maybe a little world, bit. <laughs> world War One. What the hell was that? Yeah. Thought, like, you know, yeah. I I should have seen this coming, knowing that the World War Two had the number two on it. Yeah. Like I really should have anticipated. There was a first Maybe one. There yeah. was a first one too. Who knew? Who knew? Maybe the number one <laughs> comes before the number two. Did they teach us that? I don't know. Man, yeah. I should go see if there's a. A lethal weapon one because man lethal weapon 2 was amazing <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. Never, never even thought to look <laughs> I, i'm curious though is there really a terminator part one because i saw two and it was fucking <laughs> sick Jeez. Jesus. it really was all right so That'll continue really clear on, a guys. lot of that timeline up for you <laughs> yeah that last one fucked everything up uh a new free update for Surgeon Simulator lets players operate on presidential candidate Donald Trump. <laughs> Did you guys see this? This is like really cool. Uh, everybody's I love seen this, this shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. It, it, it's, it's funny to watch. They should let people operate on Hil Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, private server, too. You know, like Bomb Simulator, and we should operate on her private server and try to extract the, the information that she has in her basement. Yeah, that'd be awesome. FBI, go get her. All right, so new rumors this week suggest Nintendo's NX console will feature VR integration in some way. What kind of rumors are these, Ronnie? Tell me about um, I believe this is why Nintendo pushed back the NX to March 2017 because they're serious? seeing this virtual reality craze, and so they want to get on it too. Of course, because if they see there's money involved, they're going to want to get in on this. Mm. And my fear is that I hope this isn't just shoehorned in. Like I hope they do this right. And I hope it's done well, but you never know. So from a hardware well, perspective, though, the only thing you need to do it right is power. You got to throw power at this problem. It oh, is, yeah. It's a straight up. You got to have a monster rig to run VR properly. And if they mm -hmm. were about to release something that didn't have the power to do it, and they're interested in do, doing VR down the road, you know that's that's valid. You know, like hey, you know, if yeah. we wait, we can throw a little bit more power in this box, keep it the same price we were planning on. You know, releasing it at, and then we'll have the option of VR in the future. That could be, you know. I, uh, I like I like the idea of what this new Nintendo could be, man. I, the last it's few fun years to speculate been... about. We've been speculating about it since the Beastly Thought Show started, and yeah. I'll be honest with you, it's one of the most fun things we do is talk about oh, NX. Yeah. I love talking about NX. Yeah, every week. 
Oh, my God. And our final bit of news before we get into the E3 stuff. I know it's going to touch Briar. Bungie b- will be revealing the future of Destiny on Thursday, June 9th at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, Jesus! What kind of news can we expect? Oh uh, man! So, uh, like, I I think it's gonna be. Uh, we saw the Rise of Iron trailer leak uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, we know that Activision doesn't have a booth at E3 this year, so I think what Bungie is doing is they're going to announce the Rise of Iron. I think it's going to be a Taken King size expansion to Destiny that's coming out in September, and I think they're going to do the reveal for this thing. And then over the summer, they're going to be feeding us little tidbits of more and more cool stuff that's going to be in the next version of Destiny. I'm so excited for this. Yeah, I am too. Me too. I cannot wait. This year has been hard for Destiny players people who love destiny man it's been hard because they just haven't released a lot of content so the fact that there's new content to talk about is very exciting (laughs) 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 i can't wait to find out more about it man i I love destiny especially when it's new especially Uh, when it's something new to get into holy yeah Yeah, new raids man new raids are they're kind of my favorite thing right it's like i love getting into a new raid fresh never seen any part of it before and just working with a team of six to figure that shit out it is fun man i'm just thinking about it you know you said that this new expansion is going to be around the size of the taken king which was huge okay mm-hmm. uh and and i was thinking of the possibility of what if you could just erase all memory of ever playing destiny and play it from the fucking beginning that would be a hell of an experience man from the beginning to now there's a lot of shit there. There's a lot of meat. So I actually uh, I actually started playing Destiny from scratch on Xbox. Xbox mm-hmm. One just r- last week. I wanted to be able to play with Xbox One players, um, which because I've frankly just been neglecting it. I own a copy of Destiny for Xbox One. Why don't I start leveling up a character so I can play raids and you know the events with uh, Xbox players? And it's amazing how much that game has changed. The storyline makes much stuff? more sense. Yeah, they rejiggered how the story happens. They 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 took all of those missions, uh, put them in a different order of sequence and events, uh, and it makes a lot more sense when you're going through yeah. them. Like they did a nice job with the early parts of Destiny. So if you're getting into Destiny for the first time right now, this is by far the best version of Destiny we've ever had. Like by oh, a yeah. long shot. Um, so to be honest with you, I don't think I'd want to do it. I wouldn't want to go back to year one. I wouldn't want to go back to the vanilla, vanilla Desi. I'm happy with what we got right now, and I can't wait to get even more. Oh, oh shit! And, <laughs> and then after this, after this, Destiny's two, Destiny, Destiny two. two in 2017. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. All right, guys. So that's it for the news. All right. So how do you guys feel E3 about hype. The, to, to the real <laughs> shit? Yeah. Yes. We already talked about Nintendo, so now we can talk about the big two. All right. right. So what, you want to start with Xbox One X or Xbox? They're doing the first press conference, right? Yeah. On Monday, yes. First so, one on Monday. That'll be pretty exciting to see what what they're gonna do. Just on a hardware level, like the mm-hmm. rumor is, we're gonna see the slim Xbox with a redesigned controller, uh, and that they got the Scorpio coming out in 2017. So what do they talk about at this press conference as, hard, as far as hardware goes? Oh God, as far as hardware goes, I'm thinking that. I would like to think that they they have some form or a faster GPU, something a little bit better than they have now. Do you think they're going to they, talk about the Scorpio? They, I think it's too early. No, I don't think so. No, I'm talking about the Slim. Because as of right now, the facts yeah. are. I'm talking about the Slim. I don't think that the Slim is going to be just Slim. I don't. I think that would be a horrible idea. Because if they announce the Slim as just uh, aesthetically more pleasing, smaller uh, form factor, and a new controller, but it's still is being trumped by PlayStation, vanilla PlayStation, and then Sony's going to announce this new PlayStation 4K that comes out. It's going to push the Xbox One or the Slim back to third spot. Okay? Yeah. They, they already know this. I think that the Slim Xbox Xbox One has got to have something inside that I box. I don't see this happening, Beastly. I don't. I don't think there's enough time we'll for them see. to do that. I don't we'll see it see. happening because how are, like it doesn't make sense to release an upgraded Xbox One and then an upgraded Xbox One. <laughs> like, well, well, there's been new yeah. rumors and speculation about the Xbox Scorpio that is saying that this was actually the Xbox Two. This is what they've been working on, uh-huh. and that the information uh. was leaked. 
So the Xbox Slim could, in fact, be the Xbox 1.5, and the Xbox Scorpio could but be the generation. But how are they going to sell this to customers? If they, if they, if they They're ask in a tough us to buy a 1.5 this year, and then ask us to buy a 2 next year... I just don't see it. I don't see that being reasonable. I, I just don't see think, it being reasonable. I think that the yeah. whole thing is a really hard sell from this perspective. I mean, for, I, for see a, X- I see a slim... We already saw a price cut for the Xbox One down to three hundred dollars. I see a slim coming out this year, redesigned controller. Three forty nine. I hope not. I hope that thing's less than three hundred. You would think it's less than three hundred. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a redesign. They're going to take out all that TV bullshit that's in the Xbox One. It's going to be cheaper to manufacture, and they're going to be able to do ouch. a price cut along with it. Uh, Brian, I hope so. Glad. I didn't expect that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, uh, I see the I see the Xbox Slim being cheaper than the the current Xbox One. I mean, that's how it's been traditionally. It's going to have less me, features to it. It's going to have less features. It has a new controller though. New controller, and, and mostly no uh, Blu-ray drive as well. Yeah, that's the yeah thing. probably now, an upgraded Blu-ray drive that that can do 4K Blu-ray, right? Ooh, no, I thought really? there was no Blu-ray drive. I thought that's there was supposed to be I no Blu-ray was drive no in Blu-ray. Slim. Yeah, that would be no fucking Blu-ray. dumb. That's what I heard. Well, it's a cut I don't cost. believe that's it. Purpose, I've heard that so. rumor too, but I don't yeah. believe it. They're, they're saying that that's yeah. they, they wanted to upgrade the hard drive to uh, either a one or a two terabyte. That's not big removing... enough. Especially if you get rid of that Blu-ray drive. That's not big enough. Yeah, you're fucked. Honestly, yeah. yeah. My no, there needs to be a Blu-ray purpose. drive in this thing, and it better be. It should be the H. You know, the 4K Blu-ray. Let me ask you a if question. They're smart. Man. Let me ask you a question. Phil Spencer hits that stage. He comes out with a slim Xbox One, yeah. knowing that they're going to have an Xbox Two next year. Yeah. How do you sell it? Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Four K Blu Ray. That's a compelling argument. Even if you already oh, own an Xbox One, that's a compelling argument. Ooh, that is a compelling argument. I think two forty nine or two ninety nine. I think it'll be somewhere in that price point too. You can already so, get an so, Xbox. Yeah, I, you can get the current Xbox for th- two two ninety nine. That's only temporary, though. It's going to go back up to three forty nine. No, so it's that's not. why I'm saying two ninety nine. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's after June thirteenth. Robbie, I just covered the story. The the price has dropped. It's it's a complete drop now. Uh, it is. Yes. Oh. The Be- watch the Beastly Gamer channel for more news and updates. I'm sir. sorry. Okay, it's, I didn't know that. It's it's definitely. You should hit that subscribe button over there, Robbie. God damn it, I Robbie! Don't I have. It's you been a year and a half. Latest, you want to keep up with the latest news and uh, video game happenings? You got to check out the Beastly Gamer channel. I should just leave. You, you know should, what? You should hit that subscribe button. Get over there, hit that subscribe button, keep subscribe. yourself updated. Oh, okay, I already have. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. From so, what I remember, June 13th was the day they were bringing the price back up. I'm sorry. Though. No, no, the price is I now bought. down to 2.99. Uh, they announced it on the first. They announced it on the first, and it, it is down to 2.99 for good. So, um, it, it's it's really an interesting time to be an Xbox gamer, at least. Now yeah. we know all this hardware stuff is happening. What about the games? What games from, from the Microsoft front have you guys excited right now? In an overall like an overall projected thing, they need to start showing off first-party games for the Xbox One. They need Absolutely. to start they showing off exclusives for the Xbox One. They need Absolutely. to give gamers a reason to buy the Xbox One. And they, I think this, yeah. this problem they have of having the xbox one and pc be like these two separate platforms or you know trying to bring games out on both at the same time i think that's kind of biting their xbox one sales in the ass they need to treat the xbox one as its own special thing and they need to start getting developers developing games for the xbox one i I agree with you but i don't know if they're going to go that direction it seems like every one of their new later exclusives has gone to PC as yeah. well. They're, yeah. they're really Quantum embracing break. this like micro this Xbox One brand on PC too. Which that, to be honest with you, that app on PC is pretty fucking nice. <laughs> it it <laughs> is. Good. Now, as far as Xbox One exclusives that I'm actually excited for, there aren't really many because we don't know of any right now. And and Xbox doesn't really have a, a long lineage of uh, first party uh, IP that we really can just go to and pull yeah. from that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Like the God of Wars and you know games like this. Right. But Recore, Recore does sound like a really interesting game. Do you guys remember this? 
No. We haven't yeah, even seen it yet. We should see gameplay. I hope at the C3 will finally see. That's what I'm thinking. See. Of course, we're going to see. We have to see gameplay from it. Recore is the game where you're this young lady. I'm trying to remember exactly who was behind the development. You're a girl. Keiji Inafune and Armature. Inafune, yeah, yeah. I think. And uh, she has this little robot dog with her, and the dog has like an orb inside of it. And uh, that orb basically is the core of the animal or the robot. And that orb can be taken out and put into other machines throughout the game to help you progress throughout the store. Microsoft needs shit like this, to be totally honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what they've been doing for, for the last two years hasn't really worked. they got to have fresh IP and stuff that you can only get on Xbox that's yeah. going to really, really uh, push and drive the sales. People in the comments are saying uh, Sea of Thieves. That's a huge one. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. excited for that, yeah. too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Sea of Thieves. I, I and totally they had Fable. That's gone now. Yeah. Oh yeah, Fab- Fable's right. dead. It's it's yeah. it's dead. In, in I, the I don't dirt. think Gears of War is really all that exciting. You guys hyped it, it, up for Gears of War? I played the the multiplayer be- beta and I really wasn't excited, Brian. I didn't Maybe. like the multiplayer. I've never it, liked it, multiplayer in Gears of War. I know there are people who are huge fans of multiplayer in Gears of War. It's never been my thing. I, well, I, I have it, usually liked the campaigns though. One, two, and three, I enjoyed the campa- campaigns tremendously. Yeah, well, I'm and playing the 2's campaign. It's really, really good. Uh, part 4 looks stunning as far as the campaign looked from what we've seen uh, previously. Whether yeah. or not it, it, it translates as well uh, when they show it at E3, who, who knows. But uh, I'll probably end up grabbing it because I like to support, you know, especially uh, exclusives on my consoles. But another game that everybody's talking about for Xbox One is the new Crackdown. Um, yes, that's really using the, the power, power of the cloud, cloud, cloud. Uh, whether or not that actually happens or not. Yeah, I see that face, Briar. The cloud. It's, I it's really in the sky. enjoyed the original Crackdown. It oh was, yeah, man. I bought that game because I, was it Halo Two that came like the beta came with that game, or was it Halo Three? I don't know. I had it's one of Halo the Halo 3. games had a beta like that you could get into if you bought Crackdown. So I bought it for that reason, and then I played all the way through that game. Loved that game. Crackdown 2 was a huge disappointment, and I don't know that there's really any room for Crackdown anymore because what that game was offering was something that was unavailable at the time, but mm-hmm. is now completely commonplace. Yeah, yeah. It's so been, I just don't know. Games. Like, like I, that game's got some cachet with like old Xbox gamers. Hardcore, yeah. But it's not like I, I just don't. What do you do with that game that you know a hundred other games haven't done already? Mm. Yeah. Okay. It was a novel well, idea at the time, but. Well, we have well, some scale bound as well. That's one I'm very excited for. <laughs> Platinum. Yep. Now let me let me say this, okay? I got Ninja Turtles on PlayStation Four. I haven't oh, played sorry. it yet. Haven't played it yet. You know <laughs> what? I bought it without check good. it out. I bought it just because it was a platinum game. Mm-hmm. And then all the reviews came out and I was like, Oh my god, this is horrible. Yeah, you, I've heard four, if you don't take the plastic games, off, you can still return it, right? I think I am. I think I honestly <laughs> think I will. <laughs> wow. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's a four-hour campaign, horrible game. It is not really what Platinum is known for. You know, after what they did for Bayonetta, I was completely on board. And I'm thinking that Scalebound is going to be on the same level of fun and adventure and exciting as Bayonetta 2. But if it's more of what we saw in Turtles, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, I really honestly yeah. don't. I hope not. I mean, Turtles game awesome. with the... the... The guy with the sword and he has it's some like kind Monster of Hunter. It's beat, very yeah. similar. Does he have the Beats yeah. headphones? Yeah, he's got the. Oh, he rides yeah. the dragon. That game yeah. looks fucking dumb to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> it did, man. Like, Shut that, up, Brian. I could not I'm get on board with that character at all. Like with well, the Beats headphones and like that the, the tune. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is yeah, stupid. Yeah, the dude. It's like <laughs> oh, DMC all over again. It looked, you know, to be honest, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt because it is platinum. Uh, they're doing near too. I ho- hopefully they're able to pull pull this one out and make it good because they really crapped on Turtles and that's one of my favorite franchises of all time. I so, hope they fix that frame rate. That frame rate we, was awful. We've, we've <laughs> talked about Xbox and if you guys have more Xbox news and things you want to talk about, leave it in the comments and we'll try to get around to it. I, want, I well, definitely want on. to see more Cuphead. Definitely oh, want to see God. more Cuphead. Yes. Yeah. That's looks one of those so games that I've never seen anything that looks like that in video game form and I just I can't wait to see more of that game. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so Let's move on over to the PlayStation side. I don't, is there really guys, anything to talk about with PlayStation? Can't we just move right past it? What? That's real, that's real <laughs> fucked up. I cannot do that, Briar. <laughs> you guys get on Briar Rabbit in the comment section. Everyone leap on him right now. Briar? Please? No. <laughs> Where's Beyonce's group? Throw a bunch of bees at him. Shit. All right, so 
PlayStation 4, of course, we know we're going to hear about this new hardware, the right, PlayStation the Neo. 4. Uh, and, and honestly, guys, I don't know what to think right now. They got to sell me on this thing. It's going to have to be something new and something exciting, and it's going to have to do something that this right. PlayStation. So can't here's my do. prediction for this thing: we're going to have I mean, HD Blu-ray in it with 4K, you know, 4K output. It'll up-res games to 4K, uh, and it'll have a little bit more power. So, like, if you're running a VR headset or something like that. It'll be able to hit like a higher frame rate than what you're used to, but it launches at five, four hundred dollars. Hmm. You think it's worth think so. it? Yeah. Well, at three forty nine, the the PS four is at three forty nine, and I think they will also see a price drop for the regular PlayStation. Yeah, I think it's going to drop to two ninety nine. Oh, yeah. To be to be honest, yeah. uh, and if it's if it releases at four hundred dollars, and they show us, you know, through videos and and, and actual proof. This is what this game looks like on the traditional PlayStation 4. This is what the frame rate is on the Neo. You need this. If they show us 4K video streaming, they show us 4K Blu-ray, and we know it's a real thing. And I don't know what to expect, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that we're going to see some change in the, the form factor of the PS4 itself. Whether it's slightly more slim or maybe more concave, who knows what they're going to do. I don't think it's going to look... I don't think it's going to look exactly like the one we have now. I just, part of me, de- when have they ever done that? When have the I never Sony thought ever, about that. Yeah. When has Sony ever done that? Every slim that they've, or, or any time they've released a new or follow up to one of their consoles, it's always looked different. Yeah, in essence, this is slightly different from what they've done before, but they've never released a, a console that looks exactly like, you know, I guess its predecessor. It's going to look I different. I guess you don't really do a slim either with the PS4. I mean, it's already so, it's so streamlined, slim. well made. Yeah, it's like so I... slim right now. You know, they got that power brick inside the PS4 somehow. But uh, I'm excited for it. I just I have to know that it's the real deal before I, because I'm still on a 1080p TV. It's beautiful, beautiful. And so they've got to sell <laughs> me on this thing. I feel like Donald Trump. It's it's huge. It's huge. It's in my living room. Um, and so. <laughs> Once they show me this thing, and, and I know that it's the real deal, that'll kind of be my inspiration to move to the 4K world. And I'm going to buy it day one, I'll be honest with you. Um, the 4K support is not what excites me. It's the um, the upgraded frame rates that we could see in games. That's what oh, really yeah. gets me. And I because, know it's 60 because I do what I do, you know, it's like it's easy for me to just say, yeah, I'm just going to buy it. And then, you know, I, in fact, I already sold my PlayStation 4, well, one of my PlayStation 4s. Because uh, yeah. I, I might as well, you know I might as well sell it while the selling's good, right? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? pretty and smart. I just threw that money into an account, so it's just sitting there waiting for the the four point five to come out. All right. Well, I, I was considering doing that, right? Uh, and, and more than likely, I will. But for me, they both matter. I didn't speak too highly or too much more on the frame rate, but of course, I'd rather see sixty frames on more games than anything else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I've never, I've never had a four K TV. I've never seen 4K programming. I don't neither, go to Best really. Buy and stare at TVs anymore. Yeah, like I it used looks to. really good. 4K looks so, really good. It's not as big a jump as it was to 1080p, though. Like the gotcha. the, the jump from you know the old standard def to 1080 was yeah that was like mind blowing, crazy. right? It was like this is incredible. The jump from 1080 to 4K, it's noticeable. It looks great. It's not mind blowing. It's not gonna blow your mind. It's like yeah. Avengers too. We've already seen Avengers. Okay. But I will say for video games, once and this is not the time for that. But once consoles and once even PCs have a tr- trouble running games at 4K, once that becomes a thing, though, once like 4K gaming is a thing, it is that's a better application than I think even movies is. Like mm. it looks mm-hmm. so detailed. The, the world is just so much richer in that higher resolution. I have a 5K monitor that's just like, you know, attached to my Mac. And technically, I can run games at that resolution natively. The frame rate is fucking complete garbage. <laughs> but just looking at it, you know, a static image of it on my screen, it's like, yeah, I can't wait till this is a thing. Because it's high resolution gaming is very, very nice. I lost my mind. I got a four. I got a four K laptop, but I've run it in ten eighty p because my applications just don't. They don't uh, pan properly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Uh, and I guess we'll see more in a couple of fucking days. Yeah. Now, yeah, as, far, as far as games at the Sony convention, what are you guys thinking of uh, that we're we're going to see? You guys have any wild cards, or what are you excited to see more? Now, I'll say Horizon Zero Dawn. Boom. 
That yes. is my explosion. Open the conference with that. Like that absolutely open the conference with that too. I've been, I've been watching too much Donald Trump. Bing bing, it's over for me. As soon as I see <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn, that game has really, really got me damn excited. I want to know more about the story. Like I can't wait to find out more about that game. It's just so different and cool looking. Like it's it's incredible. It looks awesome. Do you guys good. think it's possible? You know, a lot of these companies, these developers, are choosing Microsoft and Sony to kind of out their new games. Do you guys think it's possible we could see maybe a Red Dead Redemption two at the Sony? Oh my Sony god, I want to see Red Dead Redemption two oh so my, bad. I would lose my mind. Like. Jesus, I want Red Dead too. I personally, yeah, I think that's the that's the thing I want almost More? most of all. Um, Me too. Like I really like to see that game. I thought that game, the first one, was incredible. Uh, and yeah, I don't think a lot you? of people played it for some reason. I always get the impression that a lot of people didn't play that game. Um, really? You know, it wasn't yeah, it wasn't as popular as like a GTA. And, well, it's GTA. It's yeah. the thing. I think a lot of people played Red Dead, man. Red yeah, Dead is a lot of people fucking phenomenal. It. I remember that game was my sick. Yeah. And, and it had some of the best DLC do, I've ever played. It's been a long yeah. time since that game was released. The, what they could do with newer technology to make that game even better. What they learned were their mistakes in the first game. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing that forward. Oh, God, I would love to see that happen. No, they've, they've had some new yeah. leaked images of Red Dead and its, its actual physical assets. It's part of the, the world that doesn't exist in the game that we know of. So a lot of people are saying it's from Red Dead 2, and it does look – it looks on par with 8th generation console graphics. So I'm excited about it, man. If Red Dead is announced, fuck, it's over. Man. It has to be the thing I'm That's... the most excited about by far. Like I just – I would be so happy. And it just seems like it's going to happen. And I think E3 is – very you likely. Got, I think we'll also find out about the PlayStation VR headset. We'll find out pricing for that. We'll get a release date, a firm release date. Um, and I'm really excited to see that. Hopefully we'll see some games that really take advantage of that technology. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they dropped the ball, the PlayStation experience, to be quite honest. To be frank, when they showed us that all that PlayStation VR stuff at PSX, it was boring and lackluster, and I just wasn't It really excited. works, yeah. I, I want to see a game that... Wow, this looks great. It looks on on the level, yeah. And it, it's only on VR. I want that kind of experience. Every game they show me, it looked like a colored version of fucking Nintendo's VR. You know, it, it they all, every game great. I see for VR right now looks like it'd be like in a Mario Party or, uh, you know, like it's just a little like demo kind of thing. And what I'm looking forward like to the meat and potatoes. Be fun VR. A full fledged game, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now since we're talking about PlayStation, I I couldn't resist. You guys excited to hear about Titanfall 2? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, very excited. <laughs> you know, normally it would be an Xbox thing, but I had to, you know, play with that. I'm actually excited about this. I talked to my wife about it. She was like, it's oh, God, whatever. EA thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be more EA. I don't yeah. even know, like, who are they going to market it with? Will they even go with, like, Xbox or PlayStation on the marketing, or will they just kind of not do that? Briar no said idea. this many, many months ago. Briar said that more and more companies are going to start leaning toward PlayStation because... They've got so many more, uh, you know, yeah. sold consoles sold across. You think that's still going to happen, or you th still think Microsoft is throwing boatloads of money to get those exclusives, man? I, I don't I think know. I think they're definitely throwing money at people. Um, I think Titanfall yeah. was a, it was a rough thing for Titanfall to launch just on Xbox One on a console that wasn't selling very well, uh, and then to release basically a feature incomplete game uh, really yeah. kind of hurt that brand. So Titanfall Two has got to be very good. It's got to be. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, it that, has to. that brand and that studio could just go away. It's dead. It'll be yeah. dead. Now, this is something that I'm actually kind of excited about because the not the last game, but actually part three, really broke broke and kind of shattered that console generation. You guys excited to see God of War 4? No. Absolutely. I am. <laughs> I, am. I love Ryan said he's like, like, no. I'm just like, yes. <laughs> God, I, you know, and the funny thing is, I was talking about this this morning with my wife during the E3 kind of predictions, and she didn't know God of War 4 was a thing. She just fucking went crazy. There's a huge fan base of God of War fans, the hardcore. She's hardcore. Man, she loves God of War. She loves Kratos. Um, and uh, I'm I excited did too, to see back in the PlayStation 2 days, but that brand has lost a lot of respect in my eyes. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. It's like, kind of become stagnant. What the fuck are they going to do? Think? Another Kratos game? Come on, man. Ares. He's just going to yell at everyone. It's yeah. always Ares, too. God damn it. <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys think it's possible? Do you guys think it's possible we could see Resident Evil 7 at E3 this year? 
Oh my god, you're just bringing up all this shit I don't care about. <laughs> you don't care about no. Resident Evil Seven? Not okay. after Resident Evil Six? No. Yeah, what? Yeah, that was dog shit. <laughs> well, Resident Evil Six is total shit. I totally agree with you. But uh, yeah. the developers and the team working on Seven said this is a complete return to form. Mm. They're going straight back to the the original survival horror that made Resident Evil great back in its heyday. I hope so. that, that's exciting. That sounds to like me. what I would say too. <laughs> God God damn, yeah. bro. I can't oh, yeah, it's going you, back. Man. We're gonna do that, and then they totally don't. Yeah, now, isn't that what they, they said do, for Resident Evil Six? <laughs> I don't know what that man. You know what? I don't even want to think. We're not gonna say six today, okay? That game <laughs> fucking sucked. Uh, but if they do uh, find a way to to kind of bring back that old survival horror vibe and make Resident Evil Seven, you know, kind of in the vein of Resident Evil One, Two, Three, Code Veronica, um, I'm. Another game, PlayStation. You guys excited to see The Last Guardian at all? Team Eco? Man, I, Team I remember seeing that that trailer last year, and it just looked boring. Oh yeah, yeah. That little that little that little section there. You know, there wasn't any dog fights and shootouts. But that's really not what these kind of games are all about. Uh, you know, if you played Shadow of the Colossus, Shadow of the Colossus was exciting, man. There was pl- if they showed you. The Wonderer walk, riding his horse across a, a giant fucking valley. Yeah, like, that shit looks boring. That was so like it, that was some mind blowing gameplay when they showed off Shadow of the Colossus. Oh God, it was. God, but this so game, good. I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. It was like, isn't Mark Cerny working it on? It was like on this Clifford stuff? the Big Red Dog in video game form. I, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Right, like, you, are, just... you are hitting the nail on the head hard today, okay, man? Well, I think we're gonna see it. Do you guys think it's possible we could see a release date? It would be better, because they just reaffirmed better, that yeah, the game right. is coming in 2016, so there has to be a release date. And it cannot get delayed again. Don't okay. do that. And I'm sorry, this I'm no. going through my list, guys, so if you guys got something, go ahead and interject. But another thing that I wanted to ask you guys about, do you think it's possible that we could see the Episode 1 release date for Final Fantasy VII the Remake? <sighs> episode 1, now keep in mind, they're not making the entire game. It's going to be episodic. Yeah. And each each episode is going to be as long as a traditional Final Fantasy XIII release. I don't know about an exact release date. I think they'll put down a window. I bet it'll say 2017. That's all they're going to say. That's a great, I think that's, so. That's very likely. What about you, Briar? I don't care. Fuck Final Fantasy? All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I've known you for years, sir. I know exactly what it is. Um, Do you want them you got- to develop that entire game and then release it in, like, like... Like with one month windows in between the episodes, or do you want oh, them to release the, like develop each episode a, and then release them with like a year or two in between? Yeah, that's that's what they need to do. They need to pay respect to what Final Fantasy VII is. I will wait a year or two. I swear, I will. I don't care. If that would be comes, disappointing to get like to the end no. of disc one or episode one and then not be able to keep going. No, it's you know it's oh. kind of an open world kind of experience. You can go out and continue to level up and stuff. Uh, another game that I wanted to ask you guys about. Do you guys think we're going to see get a release date of Mass Effect Andromeda? That'd be good. Re- mm, That's EA. I don't too. know. I don't know if that'll get a release. That's hard. This shit has been in development so. since God. It's been in development for a very long time. They better have. I don't something. think a release date quite yet. Uh, well, you know what? Maybe they will. It'll be March. It'll be around March. That's all. I, like I know. like early 20, 2017, Like do one of those type, type things. Yeah, give you know them another a, year. Like do another a trailer year. and then it says like coming early 2017 or coming in 2017, but release I mean, date long, probably not. How long have they been working on this game? It's been, been a, a pretty long. I think another year is plenty enough time, you know. Uh, and hopefully we'll see some of that. Um, now this is just me. Nintendo supposedly isn't going to show any NX stuff, but I do believe that Nintendo will at least talk about and possibly uh, give minute details. On their new handheld, do you guys think this is possible? No, I want them to. I don't think, but they're gonna. not going to. Yeah, because we they already announced that this thing is a, a console and a handheld. They've only talked about the console aspect of it. They did that a year ago. I'm thinking that this is a good time to at least bring the handheld into the fold. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe. Six. No, I think Sorry, they're, they're going to be should... about Legend of Zelda. They're going to be about games that are coming out uh, this fall. They're gonna. What games? What games? There's nothing. Nintendo is a, a barren wasteland. There's a tumbleweed 
rolling wanna, across. I, the I, I'm ready to hear yes. about the NX, but I don't think Nintendo's willing to share yet. Gotcha. They're not. Okay. Yeah. So guys, oh. that was that was my list of games. So you guys can please interject anything that you that you think we may see that maybe I didn't cover. I'm really excited for Legend of Zelda, man. I'll be honest with you. Uh, an open world Legend of Zelda. Um, I'm really actually excited to see what this game is going to be. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm excited to buy the game sight unseen, but I am excited to see what they're doing with that game. Um, it's so, the, the only downside of that, Briar, um, the Legend of Zelda, is that you're going to have to find your Wii U. You know where it uh, is? I know exactly where it is. It's a, in a box in the basement. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> mine is I know exactly where that is. Same with mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's exciting news. Okay, Robbie, you got anything for us? Your uh, I just want to read this comment real quick. Someone said, my fingers crossed. Hope is that Kojima shows a PT clone and calls it something else as a surprise for the PS4 press conference. TP. That TP. Amazing. Yeah, it's TP yes, 2017. TP. <laughs> yeah, TP. That, that's, that's wishful TP thinking. I'd silence. be surprised if we saw anything from him yet. Yeah. No, uh, it's too early. There's no way. There's no way. He just... Basically, he just got his little plaque on his office that said Kojima Productions. Right. I'm surprised they came up with their damn logo. You know, <laughs> yeah. he, that guy's working hard. I mean, he obviously has a lot of things in the back of his mind that he wants to see through to completion. But I'm thinking we probably won't see anything from Kojima Productions until 2018. Did you guys hear about the uh, the studio logo? That's Kojima actually said that's a tease towards their next game. Yeah, it's a game. It's it, that yeah. it's, his name is um, God Luden Ludens, right? Like the cough drop. Lumens, Ludens, what? Trust me, okay. The character, the skull, <laughs> oh the blue skull. Okay. Yeah, it's called Ludens. It's like the the fakest cough drop you could ever buy in the states. They taste like candy, and they're all cherry and and lemon flavored. You've had Ludens before, Briar. They come right, in a little red bag and a little red. Yeah, box. they're basically candy. That this guy. It's candy medicine. that you can go and say <laughs> "fuck you" to your teacher with. Your teacher say, "I'm not eating candy. You. I'm eating cough medicine." I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Cough all over. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I remember, Brian remembers that shit. I used to tote those Ludens. But yeah, the character's name is either Luden or Lumen. I'm trying to remember. Uh, and they showed the rendered uh, aspect of the character, like the little helmet, the knight's helmet, with like a blue translucent skull on the inside. Yeah. Uh, it looks it looks pretty badass, but that's all we're going to get for at least the next two years. Man. Yeah. All right, I mean, let's redirect back choice. a little bit and... Uh come back into the Sony press conference because we didn't talk a lot about the first parties. We talked about God of War 4 probably happening. What about Naughty Dog? They're known for announcing a game like right after they are. just releases. They have a they second are. The Last of Us 2, right? <laughs> it's happening, baby. Get fucking excited. Get it's Bombs where's, version 2. Where's my yeah. Bombs? <laughs> I'm you so got, fucking happy. They got Joel and uh, what's her name will be coming back or do you think it'll be oh, new characters? Okay. That, well, See, Briar, for those who don't know, and if you guys haven't played Uncharted 4, mute Ellie, uh, for like Ellie, 10 name, seconds. Right? Uh, in Uncharted 4, they uh, teased a, tr a poster for the new Last of Us game. It's called The Last of Us American Daughters. And it could showed be. a it show It could be. Uh, but this is kind of what they're known for. They teased Uncharted in The Last of Us. So it's kind of tit for tat. It shows a pregnant woman with a mask on. You know, out in the barren wasteland. Very similar to Ellie too. Like very yeah, she similar. looks very similar to Ellie, but you know it's not Ellie because Ellie's impervious to all the illnesses out there. She would need a mask. So oh, spoiler! <laughs> For Last of Us, really? Oh my God! She uh, she has a That's mask a on. So so a lot of people are speculating that this could yeah, actually like be the story of her mother. I believe her mother's name is Anna. So it's possible. Uh, and I think that they're probably working on it. Druckman is a fucking wild man. So you All see the them? You see them uh, giving us a trailer, possibly, and then saying, uh, you know, release 20, window of like 2017, like coming 2017, something like that. I don't think possibly, it's time yet. possibly, I God, so. I would piss myself. You guys watch that reaction; it'll be piss everywhere. You guys will think it's lemonade. <laughs> I'll be losing my fucking mind, right? Like a newborn be, baby. It'll be a good <laughs> video. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just I honestly fucking video. don't see it yet. Um, no, I can see like PlayStation Experience at the end of the year being announced. I don't think it's quite time yet. I think they'll take a bit more time. Yeah, well, it could be this year though. It could be now. So I can see that. That's wishful thinking. I mean, and damn it, I wish that they think of doing that. It'd be Man, cool to see a trailer. Yeah. Or just, you know, a static image. You, yeah, even like a teaser. We're working. Yeah, even like a teaser. Yeah. It's just like The Last of Us coming soon. It's like, well, okay, good enough. I wouldn't say okay. 
I'd be wiping myself, drooling. <laughs> My wife would think, you got that uh, right. All right, so that's, what is that all we got, guys? Is that all we got? Yeah, huh? that's the end of the show, right? We got nothing else to talk about today, right? Xbox handheld. I just threw that shit out like there. Now, now, hold on, guys. <laughs> this, huh? is, this is something I say every year. I said it for the last two years. I'm going to say it again this year because... This is what I want, and I know it'll never happen, but the day com- might come that it actually does. I want Jumping Flash on my PlayStation 4, and I want it remastered. I want a new version of Jumping Flash. It's one of the best platforming games on the PlayStation 1. It had an amazing soundtrack and an insane character and crazy bosses and enemies. You had to jump on fucking raccoons and shoot carrots and, and <laughs> rockets. But it was just fun as hell, and it's one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games. Please, someone who matters... Make wow. Jumping Flash, please. Sold. Thank you. I'm happy. Uh, all, right, all right, guys. Right. That's going to do it for Beastly Thoughts. What episode is this? No, one, it's dude? not. It's Wait. not going to do it just yet. What do you we mean? got some announcements, sir. Oh, shit. Did you really forget make, about that? Oh, my God. No, I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. All right. We're going to start off with the uh, Blue Yeti microphone. Uh, last week, we said that. All you had to do to enter the contest is to comment on last week's video. Well, you did that. We got a ton of, um, we got a ton. Well, basically, I made uh, like these little strips of paper, right? And then I, I put a bunch of them in a hat. Um, so, uh, you know, here, I'm just going to pick one out real quick. Here it is. Okay, it's uh, Robbie Skull. Oh, wait. Oh, Robbie. He won! Oh, shit. Robbie? Oh, sh- I'll be another one. Oh, my God. oh, it's another one. Robbie Skull. Oh my God! Ro- I got him, Robbie. I got him. Robbie Skull. How many damn comments did you leave, Rob- Robbie? Oh my God. Robbie. <laughs> 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 All of these, Robbie, were you? Oh. <laughs> Robbie is in the market for a new fucking microphone, apparently. <laughs> Because all of these what? were Robbie's comments. Yeah. You gotta stop, Robbie. You just gotta stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. I'm just kidding around. <laughs> like, hold on, did I really comment them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so I got the bucket here. We got a hat to pull. Pull. Uh, I right. I might have <laughs> you should wear. You should wear that when you do it, Brian. Yeah, all the entries in here. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. There, get the mic right up in there. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mix that shit up. All right, and I'm going to pull one out. Pull it out, Briar. Pull it out. out. I'm just going to whip it out. All right, we've whipped it out. All right, I'm going to read this out. I will contact you on uh, YouTube uh, because we're going to have to get your uh, name and address. But it is Brandon Williams with the comment T. He. Super bacon. Congrats, sir. See that? There we go. Brandon Williams, Tee Super Bacon. Awesome. Uh, just in case we don't hear from Brandon Williams, I am going to pick another name out of the, out of the hat as an alternate, but I won't share that because that would be kind of mean. But yeah. I did pick another one out uh, as an alternate just in case we don't get a hold of Brandon Williams. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Brandon, uh, I have a son named Brandon, so I got... A lot of love for you yeah, guys. Congratulations, congratulations, Brandon. Congrats, yes. man. That Blue Yeti is going to change your life. You know, It's going to change your life. If you get pulled over at a stoplight and the officer walks up to you, start talking to the Yeti. Yeah. You just say, hey. The power of the Yeti compelled me. I got this, bro. I got this yeah. big. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Super bacon. Awesome. <laughs> So I, I didn't go through, uh, you know, all that because I didn't really plan this out that well. But I did already. I picked a random subscriber from my YouTube channel. I put it in our notes here. I picked I picked them out earlier today. There was about 57 comments on my video. I'm not that big of a channel. Once again, this was for my 3,000 subscriber giveaway. And it is just a PlayStation 3 game because, you know, I can't afford to give away things that cost a lot of money. So I wanted to give away something. And so I picked... Uh, a really nice comment. I uh, went through a lot of them. There was one I really liked, but it ended with black power. And so I couldn't pick that one because I'm a black guy and it's obvious bias, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I did end up picking one by McMuffin Gaming. McMuffin. McMuffin Game. 
Yes, like egg. Bias. Yeah. <laughs> Bias. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know where I'm Congrats going. Congrats to you, sir. Congrats. Congrats. You Congrats. Gaming, you will be winning this Minecraft. I will contact you on the YouTube channel. And uh, like Briar said, if I don't hear from you in the next day or two, I will pick an alternate. But McMuffins Gaming was this. I couldn't turn away. He said, I love you, Beastly. And it just touched me in my heart. I love you too, Beastly. You want it, Briar? I love you too. You want it? No, I already have it. Oh, okay. McMuffin Gaming, congratulations. Thank you all so much for supporting all of us, for supporting Robbie, Briar, and myself. It really, really means a lot that you guys come through and watch these videos, subscribe, come by and, and follow Briar on Twitch, one of the best damn Twitch channels on earth. Make sure you stay. Give your mom this link and say, Mom, go here. You will be saved. Right? You will be saved yep. and incredibly turned on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, let's not, let's not joke about the sex appeal here. You might not want your mother watching, frankly. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on There's here. There's a lot of stuff happening here. It's like that reverse <laughs> Oreo thing. I don't Trouble. know if you want your mother <laughs> dealing with this. <laughs> and this body too trust me you want to it's, it's just too much love too much sexiness here and we put our clothes on right before we went live damn it nice. pants. all right guys i think that's gonna do it for this episode uh we will be back to next week we are gonna do i think an hour late right let's do four o'clock because the yeah conference yeah all right well, well, speaking, of, speaking of english here what, what would an american say canada dry what time would that be here? Um, seven o'clock instead of six o'clock. Yeah, that's yep. more like it. Eastern time. <laughs> the right time. Eastern, Eastern time in Canada too. Fuck right off. <laughs> American time. Guys, just turn into a Canadian thing. It's not at all. I want to have Donald Trump build you a watch, okay? <laughs> you know what a movie I watched? Clock. I was watching a movie with my kid today. It's called uh, London, London Falling. London, London, London has fallen. Yeah. London has fallen. I've never wanted to yell out "America" more times in a movie. It was like it was basically like a patriotic, uh, like press release. From yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That movie is wow. it's crazy. America, right. guys. Happy America! <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you, Beastly. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you both. Next week, we'll be doing basically reactions to the E3 press conferences, right? Oh, well, I got to go. I got to go Saturday and get some uh, adult diapers. If you guys want me to go early, I'll uh, I'll send you guys some. Okay, so now there's two videos I want you to send me. One is the moonwalk, and the other one is you wearing adult diapers. All right. (laughs) I want both of those. I mean, I am going to make some mad gifts out of this. We're going (laughs) gift heavy. On both the moonwalk and the adult diapers. If you could actually film uh, yourself using the adult diapers. Yeah. <laughs> this is a... While moonwalking, <laughs> that's a hardcore shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Save bandwidth. Moonwalk in the adult diapers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you guys stay tuned for that video. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Peace. E3 hype. E3. Damn. I'm excited about it.